Welcome back. All right, uh, this is a, a career video that's been requested a few times and I thought looking at the calendar and looking at everything today and I'm like, you know what? Sure. Sure. Why not? Why not a video on Daniel Briere? So uh, Danny Briere drafted number 24 overall in 1996. And this is one of those, again, cautionary tales about why you do not label a first rounder as a bust too early. Uh, in Arizona, he didn't play at all for them until the 97-98 season. He only played five games, had one goal. And there was talk about how he wasn't necessarily projected to be very good and all of this. And then in 98-99, his full-on rookie season, 64 games, 8 goals, 14 assists, 22 points. The totals are not great. Briere... It's it's not projecting to be all that great. And in 99-2000, it wasn't either. 13 games, one goal, one assist, two points. And then he made his debut and, and played his first playoff game. No points in that. So again, Briere, three years into his professional career, four years after being drafted, he hasn't played 100 games yet, and he's got a grand total of 10 goals in the games he has played. Not looking great for him at that stage now 2000 2001 things start to look a little better plays 30 games for the coyotes 11 goals four assists 15 points only 15 points in 30 games not exactly where they want him to be but the 11 goals in 30 games are encouraging then in 2001 2002 it finally hits 78 games 32 goals 28 assists 60 points he plays five playoff games he ends up with two goals and one assist for three points in those playoff games. So the overall numbers for Briere look very solid, but he regresses a bit during the following season. 68 games, only 17 goals. Keep in mind he had 32 the year before. 29 assists and 46 points. So they decide we're, we're going to go in another direction here. Uh, we've, we've given this guy seven years out from his draft year, and it just doesn't look like it's necessarily getting better. So we're going to move in another direction. So he's traded with a 2004 third round pick, which became Andre Sakara, in exchange for Chris Gratton and a 2004 fourth round pick. Gratton, decent number two center throughout most of his career. And, uh, you know, Arizona's thinking, well, we've got to change something up. And to them, Briere, to this stage of his career, you're not seeing Danny Briere as anything necessarily special beyond, hey, he's okay. He's all right. He's one of those guys to that point that, we would argue about constantly on this channel if it existed about it existed at that point where some would say this guy's going to be great and others would say this guy's never going to be much of anything so that's where it gets interesting because then he ends up in buffalo right 14 games after the tra after the trade deadline seven goals five assists 12 points and as soon as he hits the ground in buffalo he hits that ground running and the goal scoring is there and in 2003 2004 it plays 82 games 28 goals 37 assists, 65 points. So his first full season in Buffalo, he sets career highs. And it looks great. And uh, Grattan is not having that same effect for Arizona. 2005-2006, uh, so after the lockout wiped out the season of 04-05, plays 48 games, 25 goals, 33 assists, 58 points. So well over a point a game. Uh, and then... Uh, August 15th of 2005, that says 2015, it should say 2005. Let me go ahead and fix it. So 2005, signs a one-year, $1.938 million extension, played 18 games in the playoffs that year, 8 goals, 11 assists, 19 points. So after signing that extension, has a season of more than a point a game, and he has more than a point a game in the playoffs as well. 2006-2007 uh, is the big year. And this is, if you're a Buffalo fan, this might be the part of the video where maybe, I don't know, is it nice outside? Is it like, all right, 81 games, 32 goals, 63 assists, 95 points. And it was a great season for Buffalo that year. Great season for Briere as well. But there's rumors and rumblings about whether or not they're going to be able to afford his asking price. Because his contract's running out, right? Because uh, in 2006, August 3rd of that year, he signed a one-year $5 million extension. So he's got that one-year extension to get him to unrestricted free agency. That's part of what you don't want to see a player doing. He's a restricted free agent after this one, unrestricted after this one, and 95 points tells you he's going to get a raise from that $5 million that he got that year. He ended up number 11 in the heart voting. 
He was also the the MVP of the All-Star game that year. Played 16 games in the playoffs, 3 goals, 12 assists, 15 points. So Buffalo is a pretty darn good team at that stage. And things are looking good, even though the Buffalo Slug doesn't look as good as the team does itself. The team the team is doing well despite the Buffalo Slug. So coming out of that, he signs in Philly. He signs an 8-year, $52 million extension. It's a contract Buffalo couldn't offer him. There was no way Buffalo is going to be able to offer him that. And for the Sabres, that exodus that they had, that's where things start to fall apart. We're 12 years later. They still haven't got back to where they were in 2007. So he played 17 games in the playoffs for the Flyers that year, which means that he played a lot of playoff games over those three seasons. And he's seen as a really strong playoff performer with nine goals and seven assists. And that's after... In his first season in Philadelphia, 79 games, 31 goals, 41 assists, 72 points. 2008-2009, he misses a large portion of that season with injury. 29 games, 11 goals, 14 assists, 25 points. So when he does play, he's very effective. And in the playoffs, 6 games, 1 goal, 3 assists, 4 points. Now in 2009-2010, this is a big year for Philly and a big year for Breer himself. 70, 75 games. Uh, 26 goals, 27 assists, 53 points. So his points per game have come down, but in the playoffs, he ramps it right back up. 23 games, 12 goals, 18 assists, 30 points. Leads the playoffs in scoring that year, and the Flyers go all the way to the Stanley Cup Final. And of course, notable in that too is that they were down three games to nothing against Boston. They went four games in a row to win that series in seven. Very strong series and, and overall playoffs for Briere and for the Flyers. 2010-2011, his goal scoring and points come back up. 77 games, 34 goals, which is a career high. Uh, 34 assists, 68 points. He's in the All-Star game for the second and final time in his career. In the playoffs, 11 games played, 7 goals, 2 assists, 9 points. And they're stopped by the by the Boston Bruins that year. Uh, the Bruins learned from the year before and decided, no, you're not, you're not coming back again. We're going to end it here. And then the Bruins won the Stanley Cup. 2011-2012, 70 games played, 16 goals, 33 assists, 49 points. So that's the first time in a full season that he hasn't scored tw at least 20 goals uh, since, what, oh, 2000-2001? Because that season with 11 goals, he only played 29 games. So the goal scoring falls off fast, and in the playoffs, it comes back. 11 games, 8 goals, 5 assists, 13 points, which continues this... Uh, aura he has that he's a really good playoff performer, gratefully so. 2012-2013, uh, he only plays 34 games. It was a lockout shortened season of 48. Six goals, 10 assists, 16 points. June 20th of that year, the Philadelphia Flyers bought out his contract. So that's how fast things can change. That's how fast things can change for players that are in their 30s. You can go from he's an all-star with 34 goals to two years later, he's getting his contract bought out. And you never know where that's going to happen. You, coming out of that 34-goal season, you would have predicted a drop, but that drop to 16 goals, that is that is a precipitous drop, and you never know when it's going to happen. It's one of those key things with veteran players. You don't know if injury is going to cause it, just aging, just maybe they slow down. Maybe they're on another line because you've got a younger player coming up that's really good. But whatever the reason, you will see that drop for older players. So July 4th, he signed as a UFA for two years with the Montreal Canadiens at $4 million a year. Uh, that season for Montreal, 69 games, 13 goals, 12 assists, 25 points. But in the playoffs, 16 games, 3 goals, 4 assists, 7 points. So Montreal played 16 playoff games with Briere. And again, teams that he's on don't usually go out in the first round. It really doesn't happen. 2008-2009, uh, the only time he played less than 7 playoff games, unless you go back to 2001-2002. If, if he's on the team, they should be able to get out of round 1. And that continued with the Montreal Canadiens. However, uh, a season that was a little bit less than what they'd expected from him offensively, June 30th of 2014, he's traded to Colorado Avalanche for P.A. Parento and a 2015 fifth round pick, which was moved to Tampa, became Matt Bradley. And in that final season with the Colorado Avalanche, 57 games, 8 goals, 4 assists, 12 points. So Briere ends up finishing out his career in Colorado. Ends up with 973 games played. Yep, 27 games short of 1,000. That is a shame. 307 goals, 389 assists, 696 points. Yep, four points short of 700. In the playoffs, 124, point, 124 games, 53 goals, 63 assists, 116 points. 
His points per game in the playoffs, much higher than in the regular season. You get into the playoffs, this is a guy who will produce for you. He did win World, Jan World Junior Championship gold in 1997, and in 2003 and 2004, he won gold for Team Canada at the World Championships as well. So, good playoff performer, good international performer when he wore a Team Canada jersey, and it was a trade that came back to haunt Arizona, and then when he left Buffalo, that was that was a real kick. Because again, it showed Buffalo uh, wasn't able to hold him around, and, and Buffalo was having its own series of issues. And uh, it's it's a shame because it it was definitely the case of him, I think, playing his best hockey while he was a Buffalo Sabre. Although I am wearing a Briere Flyers, this is a black accelerator jersey that I got through uh, Full Moon jerseys on eBay. So, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it definitely stands to reason that he had pretty good years with Philadelphia, too. So if you're going to say he was his best at his best in Philadelphia, I really don't have an argument against it. But hey, career of Daniel Briere. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.